back, knuckleheads. I'm Lupine Fiasco, and this is your Daily Fab Gameplay. For anyone who's new to the channel, welcome. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed, that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I'll talk through turn cycles and give my thoughts on the line I would take now, compared to the line I took then at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future to take down paper events like the ongoing ProQuest Season 5 and, most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you would like to check out the list I'm playing here or try it for yourself on Talishar, there is a Fabry deck link available in the video description below. While you're down there, if you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see daily fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you access to the DFG Discord and shiny shiny cardboard Talishar card back. At higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video, you'll get bonus DFG content every week, and there are even more benefits coming down the pipeline. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so for those who can afford to patronize me, I truly appreciate it. Now, let's talk about our sideboard and about our game plan. I would not go so far as to say that Bolton is as well represented as his fellow warriors Dorinthia or Kasai or Olympia, but it's still important that we know how to deal with him. He has a fairly good Guardian matchup. My understanding is he does not have a good Dromai matchup, and with Dromai leaving the classic constructed format today, Bolton may be far better represented than he has been recently. So let's walk through the sideboard and uh, matchup. We are leaving our loadout the same. The only change that we are making to our sideboard is we are bringing in Humbles. In this game, we are bringing out Pack Hunts. Uh, moving forward, I do like bringing out Runner Runner instead. Um, just more of a consistent game plan. Uh, Pack Hunt is very good at closing out games against Bolton. He's a warrior, so most of his cards block three. If you can hit a Soul Shield with the Pack Hunt, then you are in a great spot. But overall, uh, we are going to get a little more value out of our Pack Hunt than we are out of our Runner Runner in this matchup. Humble, really strong against Bolton. It shuts down his ability to put very large turns together, whether that be a Raiden plan or a uh, Sabres combo plan. Shutting down the offensive power of Lumina Ascension or V of the Vanguard is going to be very strong. If nothing else, you are preventing damage when you do block because Bolton's um, attack buff, if he is charged this turn, will not be active. Um, although Bolton is Warrior, we are leaving Clash of Agility in the sideboard specifically because we don't want to block really as much as possible, um, but definitely not with attack action cards. That does explain a bit why Cast Bones is here, despite Bolton being a faster deck than Saber's Kasai or Hatchet's Dorinthia. It can block Bolton's attacks without giving them extra power, but at the same time, Bolton is not so fast that we need to cut Cast Bones to speed up our own plan. As far as our plan is concerned, we are just racing. Um, we have nine pieces of go again. We have six windups. We are not bringing in our wild rides because we do want the option to block, even if it isn't an option we're crazy about taking. And we can generally mid-range our way through this matchup a lot better than we can against Duranthia, Kasai, or even Olympia. Uh, Swing Big is in here for the same reason. Bolton is not built the same way that his fellow warriors are. 
And because he can get go again so easily anyway, we aren't as concerned about giving him the quicken. Send packing is in the list because Bolton does take uh, cards out of his own hand to charge. If we can put him down to a two card hand with send packing, then his turn is going to be a lot less impactful than against a hero like Dorinthia or Kasai, who only needs two cards to have a good turn. So we are treating this like more of an aggro race than we are against a mid-range, uh, or like a mid-range grind. And we will submit deck and see what exactly that looks like. Uh, going second here, Bolton just passes the turn, which works for us. We are going to create an agility. We have our command and conquer. We have a wild ride, and that is very likely what we're going to do this turn. Command and conquer for six, wild ride for six, claw for three, make our might, pass the turn. Command and conquer with go again, offering just a bit of disruption. See how Bolton wants to deal with this. We can see that our Bolton is on Raiden. Uh, as opposed to Saber's combo, so we don't need to uh, worry about just getting blown out at any particular point, and we don't need to worry about conserving our flesh bag. We can use it when it seems appropriate, rather than trying to save it to uh, interrupt the combo. Bolton blocking with Lumina Ascension here is a really good pickup for us. We are very happy to see that. Um, this hand looking, yeah. Fine. We can E strike bottom our send packing and uh, then follow up with humble. Instead, choosing to send packing for seven and arsenaling the humble. I disagree with this for a few reasons. One, I think sending a four card 12 is just fine. Um, Especially the Humble is good disruption against Bolton, and if we're just keeping him off of cards in hand, we're building up our Tunic, we're searching for our Blood Rushes. But this line... Uh, okay, there we go. Pitching the Humble instead of the E-Strike. If we are going to take this line, which I don't necessarily agree that we should, uh, we should absolutely arsenal our E-Strike and not our Humble. Unfortunately, we do see that Easter Egg Humble here would have been great. We would have just taken Bolton's whole hand. Yes, he keeps a V of the Vanguard in Arsenal, but um, he doesn't get to use it. On the other hand, we do know that Bolton has V of the Vanguard in Arsenal, and if we can interact with that, then we are looking pretty good. Showing our own E-Strike in Arsenal, we would like to do something with this Command and Conquer. So what I am looking at doing here is going to be E-Strike for 5 go again, bottom Assault and Battery. Uh, then we can play Command and Conquer. Our other line that we can take that I actually like quite a bit more now that I'm looking at it is Block the Illuminate with Rekoromp Apex Bonebreaker. We overblock, but we do get a Might. We get to send Claw for four by pitching our Assault and Battery. Then we can discard our Mighty Windup, make two Mites, give the Claw go again, and use our Tunic to play CNC, which threatens the V in Arsenal. So I actually do like that line quite a bit. We hold on to our E-Strike for future turns when we cannot convert four cards offensively, uh, and we are still pressuring Bolton. Choosing not to block here is fine. This is Bolton's only card in Soul, so I don't feel like we've really enabled anything here. We are going to get to E-Strike for five. What, what are we doing here? Claw, E-Strike, C and C. We go three links wide. We do bait potential blocks. Um, that open the door for CNC connecting. I just don't feel like this is really what I want to be doing. I feel like I'm a little happier to mid-range Bolton than I think I'm really taking the opportunity to do here. 
I would have liked to block on my last turn. Stay at 40, keep that card out of Bolton Soul, um, still threaten with Command and Conquer. And we, uh, we at least get armor out of Bolton, so definitely not a wash. Here, Illuminate and Bolton takes an Intellect penalty. So, if Bolton didn't block with this card, we can think it is maybe Lumina Ascension, although we already saw Bolton block with Illumina. So it doesn't seem unreasonable that he would have blocked with a second one. We could also think that it is Spirit of Irina, which has no block value. But what is then weird to me is why Bolton didn't block with the Illuminate to cover up the Command and Conquer, and instead used Armor. Um, I would have thought just block with Illuminate as well, cover up the six, keep your armor, and on this turn, just play Spirit Pass. Uh, as far as dealing with this Illuminate, we really don't have a good way to use four cards here, so I do like blocking with Humble and Bonebreaker. Uh, we save four life, we prevent another card from going into Bolton's Soul. On our turn, we just E-Strike for 9, and Arsenal of Bear Fangs. Arsenaling the E-Strike very likely to be correct, just because we now have that option for go again. So I, I correctly Arsenaling an E-Strike here. Catching Bolton with a Soul Shield, bad beats, um, but even so... He is getting that two card six block value. The card going into Salt is unfortunate. And we do see him with the Spirit of Irina, so I don't understand the Illuminate uh, attack rather than block and taking that Intellect penalty. As far as our turn, we are uh, looking to set up this Blood Russian Arsenal. I agree with this line here. Um, blood Russian here seems pretty irresponsible. We have an E Strike and Arsenal which does let us get that third attack on the chain. At the same time, E-Strike does not get buffed by Blood Rush. So just threatening some damage. We know that Bolton is waiting on this via the Vanguard. Now he has Spirit, so very likely to play some Lumina Ascension. Uh, so we do get some good damage here. We set up Might, and we are just arsenaling a Blood Rush. Unfortunately, we are kind of priced into uh, keeping this hand as much as possible. I would like to play Blood Rush by pitching Cast Bones. Uh, I would also like to keep cards in hand so that we are more likely to discard one of these blues as opposed to discarding a Wild Ride. So if we are keeping our hand, the question is, are we blocking with Flesh Bag to take this last card from Bolton? Bolton charged uh, three cards from hand in order to leave himself with one. And that tells us a few things. One, it tells us that this is a strong turn. Two, it tells us that Bolton wanted to get cards out of hand ahead of our flesh bag, which tells me that this last card in Bolton's hand, the worst thing this could be for us is either a Lumina Ascension or a Beacon of Victory, because Beacon of Victory finds Lumina Ascension. If it is a Beacon of Victory, then Flesh Bag ruins it. Flesh Bag takes Beacon. Bol uh, Bolton can't play it as a response to Flesh Bag because we've not entered the reaction step. And Bolton's turn is still okay. You know, gives the Vigo again, attacks with Raid and passes. But if Bolton charged three cards from hand to keep this one, it makes me think that he is expecting the flesh bag, and if he's expecting the flesh bag, this can only be Lumina Ascension because he can play Lumina at instant speed. So, if we block with the flesh bag, Bolton can respond to the flesh bag effect by playing an instant speed Lumina Ascension, which means that we should not block with the flesh bag and just take damage. Bolton does give the V-Go again. Bolton does attack with Raiden. 
and if it but did not beacon in victory, so this could still be beacon on the raid and find Lumina, uh, or it could just be Lumina Ascension. So very correct to just not block with Flashback. We are going to take a bunch of damage this turn. Uh, we are getting hit with Double Raiden. We are committed to keeping these five cards. So uh, Bolton closing up the life total dramatically and in fact gaining life as well. Um, but we do get to five card Blood Rush and we do keep our Wild Ride. So at this point we can think about sequencing. We have two blues, Wild Ride, Runner Runner, and a Tunic. If we claw, we float a resource. We would then Wild Ride, pitching our blue, um, drawing, discarding, hoping to keep this Runner Runner because we know it's eight. But even if we draw into a three cost blue and discard the Runner Runner, we have our Tunic. So I like Claw first because we make sure that we don't miss. We are ensuring that we get our damage in um, rather than potentially breaking the draw discard. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Um, we do hit on the wild ride, so we do get to claw runner runner. But I think uh, we mitigate risk by attacking with claw first. We ensure that we are getting five extra damage this turn and we still get to go three links wide, uh, even if we discard the runner runner. Massive turn on our end, and we still have flashback. So looking at our hand here, I mean, the game basically ends if we don't die. Um, we get to discard wind up at the end of Bolton's turn. We play swing big by pitching a blue. Uh, swing big comes in for nine. And then we use Tunic to play Pulping, which very likely has Dominate. So all we need to do this turn is not die while also keeping these four cards. And that means that we are cashing in our flesh bag. Bolton does keep the Beacon of Victory. Um, potentially we lost a 50% chance just to win the game on the spot. Potentially Bolton or Drew into two Beacon of Victories or Beacon of Victory Courageous Steel Hand. Um, hard to know, but we do know that we are taking two. Bolton draws a card and we are just uh, thinking about what he could potentially kill us with. Celestial Cataclysm here uh, hits us for seven, takes us to seven. The worst thing that Bolton could do at this point. There are a number of them. We know it can't be another Celestial Cataclysm, but it could be Celestial Cataclysm, play Snatch, Snapdragon, Raiden, or Raiden, give it go again, Snatch. The only thing that we would not be able to respond to if we don't block is Beacon of Victory, number two, find Lumina Ascension. That uh, turns this turn from seven plus three into eight plus four, but even that isn't lethal. And we still have armor available to be able to block out the Raiden if we suspect that's what's happening. So all of this is to say that we're not gonna block Celestial Cataclysm because the Cataclysm can't kill us. Bolton cannot find seven damage at reaction speed. So now Raiden comes in for three. If this is Beacon plus Lumina, that's only two more damage. Um, and it's just nothing. So I don't know what this last card in Bolton's hand is, but he does take an Intellect penalty. And we get to discard our windup, make our agility. Swing big for nine, just to make sure that we don't accidentally discard our swing big. We also want to give Bolton the opportunity to play a soul shield from Arsenal. Um, we're gonna see if we can catch him without the D-React. Pulping does hit, Bolton does not have the defense reaction and we just pick up the win. Um, crazy how much more value 
per turn pull and got them, we did. But I still don't feel like we were ever in danger. That V of the Vanguard double raid in turn was massive. But even so, we had such a commanding life lead going into the turn, we were totally fine. And uh, correctly anticipating the Lumina Ascension, let us save our flesh bag, which took a card away from Bolton on his next turn that he really needed to kill us, and in fact gave him that intellect penalty. So just a tricky little line that we can look from from our look for from our Boltons uh, that do correctly play around flesh bag. So we need to correctly play around them, correctly playing around Flesh Bag, which then has the potential to catch them on the next turn. I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you learned something. If so, be sure to assault and batter that like button. The comments are always open for any questions or feedback. Again, if you have not already done so, please consider a YouTube subscription. It's free. It helps me out. But no matter what you do, catch me back here next week for more Daily Fab gameplay. If you are going to San Francisco this weekend, best of luck to you. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for my locals. If you are just going to a pro quest, then good luck to you too. Walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. Or a PTI if that's the sort of thing you're into. I wouldn't know about that. But I will see you back here on Monday. And until then, take care.